Well, this came off the trailer. It is some covering for the hardware that goes that runs just above the gutters near the roof of our trailer. And when we got to this campsite here in the Mojave National Preserve in California, I went up onto the roof to tilt the solar panels up, which is a whole other thing I'm gonna talk about. And uh, I noticed that this stuff was like, in, in places it was like bunched up and like pushing out from the uh, grooves that it slides into. But not only that, but you can see that um, it was also broken, you know, cracked in half in, very, in multiple places. So it looked awful, it looked really dumb, and since it's you know cracking and breaking, it no longer serves its purpose of protecting the bolts from the elements, or the screws I should say, that are under it. So I just pulled the whole thing off because I'm sure if I would have left it on, it would have, like next time we go to drive on the interstate, 60 mile an hour, it's just gonna you know pull off and just be flapping in the wind you know, as we're going down the interstate. and. I just, if it's like dragging down on the roof or the ground or something, I could just see that happening. So I was like, all right, let's get all this stuff off of there. Let's just pull it off. And now I need to find out where the heck do I get this stuff to replace it? So this stuff is the same as this right here that runs down uh, the, the corners of both sides of the front of our trailer. And it does the same exact thing. Behind this vinyl or you know plastic stuff is you know hardware, screws, and it's protecting it from the elements as well. And I've heard from other RVers that have you know similar trailer to ours that this is a pretty common problem that this stuff breaks and has to be replaced fairly often, like once a year or maybe once every other year. Thankfully, ours lasted about two and a half years before needing replaced, but something tells me that this part, the other corner, and possibly, you know, the opposite side of this is gonna start breaking too. So if I can just buy like a nice long roll of this stuff and just have it on hand, I think that'd probably be a pretty good idea for me to do. So if any of you know where I can get a roll of that stuff, please leave that in the comments below. You know, direct me to where I can get some for, for a decent price. And you know, it's, it's a little annoying because it's just another thing that goes wrong with RVs and trailers, you know, and it's just another thing that we need to fix because this thing's always, you know, just trying to constantly fall apart around us while we're just keeping it, you know, stapled and glued back together and all that. Um, but I don't think it's gonna be, it's, well, it's definitely not gonna be hard to replace because you just go to one end or the other and you just, you know, slide it up in there and you just keep pushing and sliding and then you seal both ends with like a, uh, this looks like some sort of silicone sealant, you know, just to make sure no water can get in there. So, you know, while it's not like a big thing, it's just another thing. And another bummer for us, you know, it's not as bad as something breaking and falling off the trailer, but it's our solar panels. We really hoped that we, with the addition of another rooftop panel and the panel that, uh, the portable fold-out panel that goes on the ground, that we would be making enough power that we wouldn't have to tilt our solar panels anymore. But unfortunately, we still do. With our panels flat to the roof of our trailer, they just don't bring in nearly as much power uh, for us to continue to live off of in the winter. Uh, well, I mean, technically we're not in the winter right now, but the sun is, you know, really low on the horizon throughout most of the day, and days are really short. You know, we're only making power between like 8 a.m. maybe, more like 9, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., uh, whereas in the summer we would be making power from like 6 a.m to 8 p.m. So your our window of sunlight is very small right now and the sun is low on the horizon. So with flat panels, the sun's just not striking the panels at any sort of angle that makes decent power. In the middle of the day, we make about 30, two 33 amps with the panels flat but with them tilted up we're making just over 50 amps so it's a massive increase in power which is awesome because before we got these two extra panels the one on the roof and the one on the ground our maximum solar input was about 28 amps and now it's over 50 so that's a good thing but the downside is again or not necessarily a downside but a bummer is that we still have to tilt our panels in the winter. And dang it, I thought I was done with that. I thought I didn't have to get up on the roof and tilt them all up anymore. It's not a big deal, but 
again, it's just another thing. If I could have eliminated that step when we get to campsites, especially when it's cold outside, um, and you know, eliminate that, you know, having to fold them back down before we leave a campsite, that would have been awesome, but nope. A real quick announcement for our patrons on Patreon. We have created something that we're really excited about. We've already had fun with it and it's only been open for a day. And that is our brand new secret Facebook page. For those of you that are patrons, um, if you haven't already joined the secret Facebook page, go ahead and get on Patreon. Check your private messages on Patreon. There is a message waiting there for you with a link to it. And we really hope you join. We've already been having a lot of fun with it. And uh, today, by the time this video comes out, this post will already be up, but today we're actually starting something. It is a uh, contest for some of you, so make sure you go check out our secret Facebook page. Enter the contest, it'll be a lot of fun, and we're really excited for it. For those of you that have already been or have already joined the Patreon secret Facebook page, or for those of you that are wanting to join it, what it is, and <laughs> this is the part that I really like about it, is this is actually a community for you guys. Now, sure, some of you may be thinking, well, isn't Patreon already a community for us? Yes, it is, but Patreon is not a very good platform for you guys to talk with each other and to share your experiences. And <laughs> I am blown away on the first day how many of you have already shared pictures of some really cool places you've gone to and some things that you've done. Now, we are hoping this is going to turn into a community for you guys. David and I are going to be relatively hands-off. We'll be posting here and there, but it's mostly for you guys to not only get to know each other, but to hopefully build some friendships, share some cool places you've been, maybe share some interesting boondocking sites that are hush-hush right now that you haven't shared with anyone yet. You know, this is a community for very like-minded people, people that really enjoy the RVing community, and we're so excited. We've had a few people that have told us that they haven't hit the road yet, but they're excited and they're building towards it, and I just love seeing all these progress updates from you. She's just excited. Yeah, she has no idea where we are or she what we're doing. She doesn't care. She just knows we're stopped and we're about to get out. Yep. She's just excited to explore. Wow. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You excited? Okay, well, let's go. Let's go. We've come to the Kelso Dunes, which is super close to our campsite, only a few miles away or so and we were able to bring Sweetie with us too. Uh, online we saw that dogs are allowed on the trail as long as they're leashed, which is awesome. And you know, she gets to run around in the sand. Oh no, Jenny, we forgot to bring her Frisbee. Doesn't matter, she has to stay on a leash. We can play Frisbee when we get back. Fine, I don't know. That just seemed like a lot of fun. Getting out on the dunes and just hucking a Frisbee as far as I can, letting this thing run after it. She'd have had a blast. We'll still have a lot of fun though. She's just happy to be out here. And we saw a tarantula and it was the biggest one we've ever seen. But one of the guys that walked past was like, oh, that's just a little guy. So it's big to us, but apparently they get a lot bigger. Uh, it's only the second tarantula we've ever even seen despite how much we've stayed out in the desert. So that's a little one. I'm excited to someday see big one. The Kelso Dunes are the most expansive dune system in the Mojave Desert. They cover 45 square miles and rise to a height of 650 feet. Northwesterly winds carry sand up to the Granite and Providence Mountains, and as the wind approaches, it is pushed up and then backwards, carrying the sand with it, which falls where the Kelso Dunes are now. Day by day and grain by grain, they were formed over 25,000 years. 
If you're lucky, the Kelso Dunes will put on a performance for you. The rare phenomena, called singing sands or booming dunes, happens when sheets of sand cascade down a steep dune and rub against stationary sand below, causing them to vibrate like a musical instrument and is described as the sound of a low-flying airplane. We didn't get to spend as much time here as we would have liked. Many have the misconception that deserts are barren and boring, but to us, they're gorgeous. Cold winds were pushing us out though. I even had to steal David's sweatshirt from him. Sweetie didn't mind though. She's like a kid in a candy shop whenever she gets to explore with us. Wow, that is so steep that the people climbing down were literally falling their way down. <laughs> oh man, it looked like it was a blast though. They were screaming and laughing. It looked like a lot of fun. David and I really wanted to get up there today, but oh man, I don't. we did not start all that late today. It is simply that the sun is gonna set at about 4.30, which is only an hour and a half away. We still have to hike all the way back to the truck. Plus, I'm really cold. There's no sunshine. The wind is beginning to pick up. David was very thoughtful and let me borrow his extra sweatshirt, but now I'm sure that he's cold. And yes. And yes. <laughs> and Sweetie has started eating the sand <laughs> and uh, I'm just, I'm ready to be done. That looks like a lot of fun. I wish it was warmer so that I had more energy and more courage to actually get all the way up there, but I'm ready to turn around. I can even tell you've got like the cold talk going on where like your cheeks are going a little numb so you're talking yeah. a little funny. My cheeks and my nose is numb and my lips are starting to go numb. Yeah, yeah. The, on the <laughs> other side of those sand dunes is the mountain range that the wind hits and the sand comes back and forms the sand dunes. I really wanted to see. Yeah. Yeah, I really wanted to see that mountain range from up there and get that 360 degree view. But something Jenny didn't mention is that, you know, when you're walking on this sand, especially oh, when man. you're climbing, you're exerting so much effort to climb because you're just pushing sand down behind you more so than actually lifting yourself up mm -hmm. with each step. So that climb at the end is super steep. And it's rated as uh, difficult online, yeah, that, yeah. just that little bit there at the end. So. Yeah, so since it's cold, the sun is beginning to set and we've got, I mean, believe it or not, we've probably got a third of the hike left. Yeah. And, and, and mo most of it is that final incline. So I think we're gonna go ahead and call it right here. And Turn around. The, my biggest disappointment though is I wish I could fly the drone here. Oh, that's been so neat. Yeah, I wish I could fly it around in these sand dunes. That would be so cool, get a <laughs> bird's eye view, but you know. Oh man, the, the get, get drone shots with like the drone just like following the sand dunes. I know, right? Oh, There's so, so cool. many. Like, I, or just get like the whole 45 square mile, yeah. you know, from like just like that. See, really see how big these sand dunes are. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this place is managed by the National Park Service, being a national preserve. And the Park Service says you can't fly drones here, so. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's go back. I have a delicious dinner planned. It'll be nice and hot. <sighs> yes, I am hungry and I'm cold and I want warm. I want warm in my belly. Do you want your sweatshirt back? No, I'm good. You can have it. Okay, well, let's hike back then. Yeah. Thanks for letting me borrow it. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you.
What you cooking, good looking? <laughs> I am cooking shrimp udon. And for those of you that have seen an old video of ours, this is actually a recipe that I've already told everyone where they can find. However, um, I used to share new recipes that I found on Patreon, but it was pretty sporadic because we don't come across new recipes all that often. So what I'm gonna do now is instead of sharing them there, I'm gonna share them to the secret Facebook group. And I'm gonna be sharing this one because even though you can find the recipe on the back of the pack of udon that I use, I have tweaked it quite a bit. <laughs> um, and I like the way that I've tweaked it a lot more. So I do want to share that with you guys. So that'll be coming out, I don't know, soon probably because I'm making it right now. So I'm gonna take a picture of it and then probably type it up very soon. <laughs> and uh, any new recipes we come across that we end up trying, you know, we'll share them there as well. We don't come across new recipes as often as you might think. We typically stick to ones that we already know because we already know them. <laughs> but any recipes that we find that, you know, we do like, we'll definitely share those with you guys. And if you guys have any recipes you want to share with us, please do. I would definitely like to see some new stuff. Yeah, any like, especially any like one pot or one skillet, like super RV friendly yeah. type recipes would be awesome. Yeah, this one is definitely, well, I mean, you can consider it a one pot meal. It just has one tiny extra pot for the sauce, but that's it. Otherwise it is technically a one pot I meal. I see two pots. I think that means it's technically two pots. Well, this is just for the sauce. One pot. Only for the two sauce. Two pot, one, two. How many pots are gonna go in the dish or in the sink? How many go in the sink? <laughs> but I, okay, but I can put, I bet, I bet I can put, <laughs> I bet I can just cook the sauce directly in with the food though. I bet you could, let's try it. Not this time. One pot. Oh, two pots. Two pots this time. Maybe one pot later. Wow. <laughs> so hiking up to those sand dunes really made me want to go check out other sand dune or other sandy places. Uh, the only one I can think of that comes to mind is like White Sands National Monument over in New Mexico. We have driven by it close enough that we totally could have checked it out and we didn't. And I regret it now because I bet that would have been a lot of fun. And I wonder... I don't know if you can, but because it's a national monument, but I think it'd be really cool if you could like rent um, some sort of an off-road vehicle or a side-by-side -side or something and just like, just tear out in the sand dunes and just have so much fun out there in the heat and in the sand. Speaking about heat and sand, <laughs> it was not warm on this hike, as I'm sure you've been able to tell. Um, the high or the current temperature outside is 44. The high today was only 48. 44 degrees. 44. Top one, yeah. Currently. The high today was only 48. Um, the wind picked up. It's already dark outside. It's only 430 or 445 or something like that right now. This, the super fine sand at this sand dune wanted me to be where it was warm and sunny and in a bathing suit with a drink on the beach, watching the sunset or something. And... Instead, you were in the cold desert. Instead, I was in the cold desert. My nose was running and the wind kept picking up and my eyes were watering and Sweetie was eating sand. <sighs> it was a little frustrating. My, sand, my, my boots are just full of sand. Oh my gosh, yeah, look at this. So she hasn't cleaned it out yet and there's it's just like a pile of sand in her boot. An entire pile of sand. How did you manage that? Mm, probably because you were walking because I was dune. walking on a sand dune in hiking boots and unlike you, I wore hiking leggings instead of hiking pants. So the sand just went right into my boot. Yep, I had to change socks. I had sand in my socks. <laughs> it was, it was a lot of sand. That looks good. It is good. It's very good. Oh, it fogged up the lens. <laughs> ah, funny. <laughs> Yum, 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 yum. So I meant to film during dinner, you know, talk a little bit and say bye to you guys, but <laughs> I guess I didn't realize just how hungry I was because I sat down and just immediately started eated, eating and completely- You started eating? I eated it. You eated it? I done eated it, yeah. <laughs> and I completely forgot <laughs> about setting the camera up or anything. I'm getting so full. <laughs> Do you need me to finish that? No. Okay, because I couldn't eat a little bit more. There are leftovers still, right? No. That was it? That was it. No! <laughs> Sorry. It only makes enough for two. I know, but I, we usually have leftovers. 
Well, that we, was, you just piled it on, didn't you? Well, no. So we usually have leftovers because normally I can't eat a lot yeah. because of all my stomach issues. Yeah, but, but you're good to go now. My stomach has been a lot better the last two weeks or so. Oh, that makes sense. So okay, well, I've been I'm able okay to eat the whole thing. Yeah. Well, thank you for cooking a delicious dinner. It's very good. Thank you for always doing all the filming because it's a lot harder than it looks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to call it a night here, guys. We'll catch you later.